Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to have this review with you. This is ABC for semester, semester three. I'm going to focus on important revision for evidence-based medicine uh, with you. To start with, I'm going to speak in English and followed by Arabic. So each sector you will hear in English format and then Arabic format for the satisfaction of all. So classification of designs in research, in biomedical research, as I discussed with you in the last semester, the study design includes observational ones, interventional ones, and meta-analysis. And as was discussed together, uh, observational study design carries hypothesis that if it is tested with interventional study design, it gives a strong evidence. And the meta-analysis, if it is well done, it carries the best level of evidence. يعني احنا عندنا ثلاثة methods كبار للresearch observational و interventional و meta analysis والسمستر اللي فات احنا قلنا ايه الفرقات ما بينهم وقلنا ال interventional design اقوى في ال evidence based medicine من observational وال meta analysis ممكن تبقى عظيمة جدا لو well done so let us start with exercise and in this exercise I'm not going to test your capabilities only for knowing the design but as well as to apply a very simple maneuver in critical appraisal. What's meant by critical appraisal of study design is to do a structural and objective uh, ass assessment and to say the points of strength and weakness. This is what I'd like to hear from you, to know the strength and weakness. But the critical appraisal template format include a lot of data and checklists that I'm going to just to show you the name of this critical appraisal system. يعني إحنا في الإكسرسايز ده هنعرض بعض الحالات ال designs من research والمفروض إن إحنا نعرف الديزاين ده إيه وإيه نقاط القوة ونقاط الضعف بما يسمى النقد الموضوعي النقد الموضوعي بنقول نقاط القوة ونقاط الضعف وعلى فكرة في templates وفورمات والتشيكليست بعد على كل نقطة بقول ده موجود ده موجود ده مش موجود فأقدر أشوف حتى في خلال الديزاين ده هل اتعمل صح ولا اتعمل غلط. Let us start with the first example. 100 patients were randomly allocated into two coded arms either an active or control. So this is the design. Both treating physician and patients don't know the nature of arm given. So this is the first one. What is this? It is clear randomized controlled study. And the masking, both treating physician and the patients don't know the nature of the arm given, so it is double blind. So double blind masking means that both treating physician and the patients don't know the nature of arm given. If we apply critical appraisal, what are the points of strength and weakness? You should review the, what we mentioned in the last semester to apply and to know strength of, uh, strong, strong points of strength and weakness. But it is randomized controlled study or not? Yes, it's a randomized controlled study. And we agreed together that randomized controlled study is the best study design to improve drug efficacy and safety. And uh, it, it avoids selection bias. By randomization, randomization means avoiding selection bias. So these are two basic statements. And here in this design, both treating physician and the patients don't know the nature of arm given. This means a double blinding masking. What double blind masking add to the strength of randomized control study? It adds a lot. It adds to avoid follow-up bias or performance bias. Because if I am a treating physician and uh, I may be energetic and enthusiastic to prove uh, my drug or the intervention under assessment, if I know the intervention, I, this may, uh, I may be more enthusiastic. So this, by this way, I can do some uh, uh, biased 
follow-up testing or to avoid some tests. So this is follow-up bias or performance bias. The second advantage of double blinding is to avoid nocebo effect. What's meant by nocebo effect? So it also avoid placebo effect and you understand what's meant by placebo from the last semester. But what's nocebo? Nocebo is the opposite of placebo. Nocebo means drug may exert side effects. So if you know, if the patient knows that, for example, a statin is associated with myalgia or muscle intolerance syndrome, so if the patient knows that he is in the statin arm, he will report excess exaggerated muscle intolerance syndrome. And if the patient knows that the drug under assessment may cause diarrhea, you will find a lot of reports about diarrhea. So if the, the study is done in double blind fashion, so I go to the patient and I speak to him that I don't know if he is receiving active or control arm, this, this will reduce the reports of adverse side effects. So nocebo is the report of adverse side effects can be avoided or nullified by double blind technique. Let us speak Arabic for this sector. So uh, if we read this, uh, uh, بهذه الطريقة ده راندوماز كنترول ستادي يس راندوماز كنترول ستادي يبقى انا ما فيش سيلكشن بايس وزي ما قلنا قبل كده ان الراندوماز كنترول ستادي هي احسن دراسه بتثبت الدراج افيكسي اند سيفتي هنا الطبيب المعالج والعيانين ما يعرفوش خدوا ايه الاكتف ولا مش الاكتف يبقى اسمه دبل بلايند ماسكينج الدبل بلايند ماسكينج بيضيف ايه لقوه وعظمه الراندوماز كنترول ستادي بيضيف ان احنا بين افويد سيلكشن بايز احنا افويد سيلكشن بايز باي راندومايزيشن هنا بالدبل بلايندنج انا بتفادى البرفورمانس بايز انا ما اكون عارف ان الدواء اللي عندي بياخد الدواء اللي انا عاوز اثبت اه انه افكتيف ولا لا ساعات بيبقى الواحد متحمس للدواء عاوز يجيب بوزيتيف ريزلتس ويبقى خايف من نيجاتيف ريزلتس فممكن يعمل حاجات او يقلل حاجات في الفولو اب يبقى اسمه فولو اب بايز او برفورمانس بايز لكن انا ما اكونش عارف انا بدي الاكتيف ولا مش اكتيف have a apply the protocol of follow up the same يبقى بطريقه الدبل بلايندنج انا تفاديت البرفورمانس بايس النقطه الثانيه اللي قلتها النوسيبو نوسيبو ده عكس البلاسيبو البلاسيبو معناها ان الدواء جاب نتائج كويسه ان كون الشخص خد دواء هيحس انه بالراحه لكن نوسيبو العكس طب تيجي ازاي لما بكون اخد دواء العيان ياخد دواء وعارف ان له سايد افكتس لما اقول له الدواء ده هوت خده وهو قال انه بيعمل سايد افكتس ممكن يجي لي جزء من العينين بسبب السايكاتريك نيورو سايكاتريك باث ويز ويشتكي من السايد افكتس زي الاستاتين مثلا يجي يشتكي انه عملت له وجع في العضلات مسل ايك او الدواء بيعمل اسهال فيجي يقول لك انا عندي اسهال لكن لما اعملها دبل بلايند تكنيك ممكن يقلل الريبورس بتاعت السايد افكتس ده يبقى لما اجي اعمل نقد للقصه دي هقول ان قاتل القوه بتشمل ان ده راندومايزيشن سو افويدنج سيلكشن بايز دبل بلايند تكنيك معناها افويدنج بيرفورمانس بايز وافويد نوسيبو افكت طيب ان كريتيكال ابريزل فورمات وي دونت اونلي ريبورت ذا بوينتس اوف سترينث بات اولسو تو بي اوبجيكتيف وي شود ريبورت بوينتس اوف ويكنس ذا بوينت اوف ويكنس ان ذيس ستادي مي بي اف اف اي ريبورت ان اف اي منشن تو يو the number of patients in HR and you find it small number, so sample size not large, this is a real problem because the lower the sample size, the lower the power of the study. So power of the study is dependent upon sample size and number of patients included. In Arabic, the topic is not to be able to remember the weaknesses and the weaknesses, but I need to remember the weaknesses. The weaknesses in this design ممكن يبقى عدد العينين يبقى انا لو ذكرت لحضرتك ان كل ارم مثلا فيه 30 عيان حتى رغم انه معمول بهذا الديزاين القوي جدا لكن 30 عيان في كل ارم يبقى الباور قوه الاستاد هتبقى مش قويه ولان الباور اوف ذا ستادي بتعتمد على عدد العينين انكلودد فكل ما زاد عدد العينين كل ما كان الباور اوف ذا ستادي كويس 
يبقى ده نقاط القوه ونقاط الضعف عشان يبقى نقد موضوعي. The second example, a study included 100 patients. All of them consented to participate in a research and all of them received the drug under investigation. Is it observational or interventional study design? It is interventional. But if they're in a control, no control. So it is uncontrolled or non-controlled interventional study. The point of strength, it is interventional, not observational. The point of weakness, the major weakness here, there is no randomization, no control uh, from the start. So this is the point of strength, interventional, and this is the one of the lowest uh, design in interventional trials is to uh, have a, 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 an interventional study without control arm. يعني هنا كل العيانين الماضوا وقعوا ان يشاركوا في the interventional study لكن ما فيش control يبقى لا في randomization ولا في control دي نقاط الضعف اللي موجودة وده نقطة القوة الوحيدة ان مش observation the interventional لكن نقطة الضعف ان دي اقل قوة او بتبقى ranked في the lowest level of interventional studies A study compared 50 patients المثال الثالث the third example a study compared 50 patients who had lung cancer to a matched group. Both groups are retrospectively evaluated to determine the risk factor in the, in the past history. It is a typical model of case control study. Case control study, why? Because I knew, I knew, from the, I knew at the start of the study, the patients who have the outcome, which is lung cancer, matched to control, so I have to group case and control. They were followed up uh, retrospectively to the past to assess risk factors like smoking. So it's case control. So I apply from the first, the first semester the presence of strength points and weakness points as, uh, as we discussed before. Uh, when I delivered this presentation in active uh, manner, I was asked why this design is not retrospective cohort because the difference between case control study and the retrospective cohort is in the case control study from the starting point, I know already the patients with the outcome. But if, if I don't know the outcome and I apply a test like chest X-ray to know who have lung cancer and who have not lung cancer, and then retrospectively follow up both groups, this will be a retrospective cohort. Case control study, لان انا عارف الاوتكم اهو لانج كانسر من البدايه وقصاده الكنترول جروب يبقى ده الكيس وده الكنترول وهمشي ريتروسبكتيف للماضي اشوف الاكسبوجر للريسك فاكتور لايك سموكي طب ليه دي مش ريتروسبكتيف كوهورت ستادي ده ما احد الطلاب سالني اثناء المحاضره لان انا هنا عارف من الاول يعني رحت المستشفى وجايب فايلات عينين انا اوريدي عارف ان عندهم لانج كانسر لكن لو انا رحت وجبت مجموعه من المرضى في قسم الصدر مثلا وعملت شيست اكس راي، شيست اكس راي وريت لي ناس فيهم فايندنج سجست اوف لانج كانسر وناس لا وقارنتهم ببعض في الماضي يبقى ده ريتروسبكتيف كوهورت لان انا ابلاي تيست في الاول علشان اشوف الاوت يبقى لو الاوت كام معلوم من البدايه ويل نون قصاد كنترول ما عندوش الاوت كام يبقى ده كيس وهمشي ريتروسبكتيف يبقى كيس كنترول ستادي. هنا ابلاي النقد الموضوعي نشوف نقاط القوه والضعف للكيس كنترول زي ما قلنا سابقا. ال Critical appraisal is not very simple like this to say just strength and weakness, but this is what we would like you to know in this early, in early life of your career. But this is one of the format, CASP. CASP means critical appraisal skills program. And in this checklist, you'll find for all designs, you have the checklist and you go through the points in the checklist to, to see if the study is best fitting even with its design or not. I'm not going to uh, assess you regarding this uh, program, but just to know strength and weakness. Put in mind that the hierarchy of evidence-based medicine start with the, the head of the evidence is the well-done meta-analysis of large randomized control studies. So this is the strongest level of evidence followed by a randomized control study, and then the observational studies, and the lastly, clinical experience or basic research. This is what we discussed before. And even with observational study, although observational, observational studies uh, rank to lower level of evidence-based medicine, even though we have 
This is an example showing contrast between cross-sectional study and the longitudinal study. So uh, in the cross-sectional study, they compared two groups. So we have two groups of patients, heavy consumer of meat and the bland to that. And then we, they assessed kidney function at one point. So there is no longitudinal follow-up. So I ask the persons about their diet habit, heavy meat, and the plant diet, and then assess kidney function. And they found that heavy uh, protein diet uh, habit is associated with high glomerular filtration rate, high GFR, and the patients in the vegetarian diet have a significant lower GFR. But both of them were within normal range. So heavy protein is associated with high GFR means better function. When they followed up the two groups in longitudinal fashion in a prospective manner for 11 years, typical cohort study, they found at the end kidney function is reduced in heavy protein diet consumer in comparison to plant diet uh, habit. Uh, so in cross-sectional, high pro heavy protein is associated with better kidney function, but after long-term follow-up, the uh, heavy protein is associated with lower kidney function. So do I accept and believe in cross-sectional or cohort study? The answer cohort study because there is longitudinal flow-up. In Arabic, حتى في الدومين بتاع observational study اللي هو أصلا ضعيف وكاري just hypothesis for research يعني مثال هنا المجموعة اللي بتاكل بروتين كتير ومجموعة بتاكل بروتين قليل عملنا cross section study يعني باكشي شوفنا وظيف الكلى في لقطة واحدة في one point of time يعني ما فيش لونجتين الفلو اب اللي هو typical cross section study <تصفيق> عفوا <تصفيق> cross section study لقينا ان الناس اللي كانوا بروتين كتير كان الجي اف ار بتاعهم عالي معناها والتاني يبقى اعلى من المجموعه الثانيه معناها كده فانكشن افضل تابعوهم لمده 11 سنه بعد 11 سنه الناس اللي كانوا ملتزمين بالهيفي بروتين دايت الكيد فانكشن بقت اقل والجي اف ار اقل من المجموعه اللي ماشيه على مودست بروتين طيب انا الوقت الكروس سكشن قالت ان الهيفي بروتين معاه كيد فانكشن عاليه احسن جي اف ار افضل ولكن على لونج تيرم بقت اقل اصدق مين اصدق الكروس سكشن ستادي ولا الكوهورت ستادي اللي فيها لونج تيرم فلو اب 11 سنه طبعا بصدق لونج تيرم فلو اب يبقى معناها ان الكروس سكشن افضل من سوري الكوهورت ستادي اللي فيها لونج تيرم فلو اب افضل من الكروس سكشن اللي فيها فلو اب يبقى اذا داخل الدومين بتاع الاوبزرفيشن ستادي في برضه رانك في حاجه اعلى وحاجه اقل ولكن ما ننساش كل الاوبزرفيشن ستاديز الايفيدنس بتاعهم ضعيف أنصحكم جميعا أن أنتم تشوفوا الفيديو ده. So I advise all of you to see this video. This is the absolute English version and the best, best fitting for visitors from uh, non-Arab world. And for Arab speaking students, I think this video is, will be uh, better. Study design made easy. Uh, mix English with Arabic and you will find also strengths and weakness as I mentioned uh, to appraise this coming point guidelines and discussed with you the, the rationale of guidelines and in nephrology we like this format the format of guidelines in nephrology depends upon the two uh, numbers one two and four letters a b c d what is meant by one and two one means recommendation and two means suggestion so the experts when they sit together to establish a diagnostic guidelines or therapeutic guidelines for certain disease, they sit together to say, we recommend or we suggest. And if this is based on research, we, we assess the level of research. If it is very strong research, A, like strong meta-analysis or a strong randomized control or a strong randomized control study. B, moderate research, C, weak research, and D, may be their opinion. So if we, uh, if we find one A means recommendation based on a strong level of research. The problem of this is the physicians, it is difficult for a physician to go against one A because even if the patient, the patient in the Western communities are aware by guidelines, 
and they, they can raise medical legal if we go against the 1A and it will be difficult for us to defend ourselves if we are go against 1A, except if after the guideline there are major trials that go in the opposite direction. So this is the only solution to defend ourselves. So 1A is a very strong evidence, but 2D is very weak. 2 means suggestion, D very le weak level of research. So uh, can we use this suggestion based on very low research? Yes, we can use so long as we are beginners, but the experts can go against because they have, may have another experience. So again, two, two numbers, one and two, one means recommend, two means suggest, A, strong research, B, uh, moderate research, C, weak research, D, very weak research. So whenever we read any statements in the guidelines, we should look at what's written between brackets in the evidence base, 1A, 2B, 2C, 2D, ATC. In Arabic, we have guidelines in nephrology that are formed by four numbers, four numbers. One and two. One means the recommendation, two is the doctor's suggestion. The level of research we can do with the experts لقوا كل الابحاث ماشيه في هذا الاتجاه وابحاث قويه جدا فيقولوا احنا ريكومندنج على يبقى 1 اي معناها ريكومنديشن بيزد على سترونج هاي كواليتي ريسيرش. طيب انا اقدر كتريتنج فيزيشن امشي عكس هذا الكلام صعب لان دول يعتبروا اور بيرز في التخصص ورجعوا هذا الكلام وادونا 1 اي معناها ده سترونج ليفل اوف ايفيدنس الا اذا بعد الجايد لاينز المفروض الجايد لاينز دي منشوره في 2018 واحنا السنه دي في اخر 2019 نزل اثنين ميجا ترايلز بيقولوا عكس الكلام ده اقدر ادفند ماي سيلف لكن لو ما فيش الكلام ده وما فيش حاجه مشت عكس هذا الكلام بيبقى في صعوبه لو رفعوا ميديكو ليجال كليم ان انا ادفند ماي سيلف اجينست 1 اي لو مشيت عكسه لكن 2 دي هل اخد بيه ولا ما اخدش بيه؟ اخد بيه لانه ده ناس محترمين في التخصص وكتبوا ان هم ده رايهم بيزد على ويك ايفيدنس اوف ريسيرش بس هم مايلين لكده طب انا مايل لكده سو لونج از انا ما عنديش خبره كافيه او اقوى منهم لكن لو انا لو اللي بيشتغل مثلا استاذي الدكتور محمد صبح 40 سنه شغل او 45 سنه شغل في النفرولوجي ومر عليه حالات ممكن تبقى اكتر من كل الناس اللي كانوا في الجايد لاينز ما دام هم قايلين تو دي وهو شايف ان هو ان هو ده ما ينفعش معاه هو شايف حاجات ثانيه ممكن يمشي عكس هذا الكلام ويت از ايزي لان ده رايهم وده رايه لكن 1 اي صعب ان يمشي عكسه يبقى ده ما يخص الجايد لاينز الفورمات اللي احنا بنحبها في النفرولوجي. ان كارديولوجي The format is different. They level this uh, uh, form. And here I want just to pay your attention toward the color. The color in the figure has meaning. So uh, green color is safe and recommended. Yellow color is good. Uh, green color, uh, orange color, uh, the evidence is very weak. Uh, red color means uh, there is harm and to be avoided. So class one means it is recommended and indicated. Class two, if it's 2A, should be considered to be, may be considered. Class three, it is not recommended and may be avoided. It's better to be avoided. And this is the typical format used in cardiology. In Arabic, the style tiny in the recommendations. وبعدين احنا بسهلنا القصة هي أخضر ألوان. الأخضر دي اسمها heat map. So heat map approach, أخضر أصفر برتقاني أحمر. اخضر ده احسن حاجه وامن حاجه وريكومندد كل ما اللون يغمق معناه ان انا متجه الاتجاه الثاني الاحمر معناها كونتر انديكيتد الاصفر هنا معناها شود بي كونسيدرد يبقى الاصفر هنا قريب من الاخضر ده لكن البرتقاني قريب من الاحمر ده بس البرتقاني ممكن استخدمه كلاين اوف تريت لكن الاحمر ما اقدرش استخدمه زي فور اكزامبل يعني في الكاردولوجي او في الهايبر تنشن مانجمنت لما يتقال انا استخدم اس انهبيتورز اور Angiotensin receptor blocker, it's okay. For diabetic, for example, patients with proteinuria, it's okay. But if can I use both, both ACE inhibitor and ARBs, it's contraindicated. They have a full harm here, as the guidelines have done. So, an example, just application for this from cardiology, from hypertension. If we have a patient diabetic, proteinuric, hypertensive patient. The best line of treatment and recommended is either to use angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitor or angiotensin receptor blocker. But 
we shouldn't use both of them in combination. So combination is prohibited according to the, uh, the cardiology guidelines. In this semester, we discuss together variables, and the variables may be categorical or qualitative. So the meaning of categorical is quality. And the categorical may be ordinal. What is an example for categorical is gender. Gender, male or female, it is category. Diabetic, non-diabetic, category. Hypertension, yes or no. Hypertensive, normotensive, category. Uh, diseased, healthy, category. Uh, living, dead, category. So all these are categorical. So what's meant by ordinal? Ordinal is a special categorical variable where there is a rank between the degrees of variable. For example, if I say temperature, low-grade fever, moderate fever, high-grade fever, there is a rank between different categories within the variable. If I say stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four malignancy, this is a rank. Low income, medium income, high income, very high income, it is rank because there is a relative uh, comparison between each category. So this is the difference between categorical and ordinal. So ordinal is, if I ask you a question, ABO system, ABO blood grouping, if I say A, B, AB, or O, is it categorical or ordinal? It is categorical. Why? Because there is no rank. There is no rank between A and B. This is separate categories. And there is no relative ranking and order between the groups within the categorical variable. Uh, in Arabic, I'm about category or qualitative. معناها إن دي حاجات زي مثلا ما أقول gender, sex, male or female. ده category. ال شخص عنده diabetes وما عندوش يبقى category. Hypertension وما عندوش category. عايش وميت category. إلى آخره. طب مال إيه الأوردينال ده؟ الأوردينال طيب من الكاتيجوري بس within the categorical uh, discrimination في uh, علاقات يعني في رانك في ترتيب يعني ما أقول عندي دخل الشخص لو ميديوم هاي الهاي أكبر من الميديوم والميديوم أكتر من اللو يبقى إذا داخل الكاتيجوري في درجات ما أقول الحرارة ده لو فيفر لو جريد ده مودريت ده هاي جريد يبقى برضه بينهم علاقه. لكن لو خدنا مثال زي الاي بي او سيستم اما اقول شخص فصلته ايه وواحد بي وواحد اي بي هل في علاقه بينهم علاقه رانك وترتيب ما فيش. يبقى اذا ده كاتيجوريكال عادي وده اوردينال. اما اقول مالجننسي ستيج واحد اثنين ثلاثه وادفانسد يبقى برضه ديجري اوردينال يبقى الاوردينال فيها ترتيب فيها حاجه اكبر من حاجه او بعد حاجه او اقل حاجه قبل حاجه يبقى لابد نحط ده في الحسبان يبقى ده كاتيجوري. نيوميريكال الاسم الثاني كوانتيتيف والكوانتيتيف ده ممكن يبقى ديسكريت او كونتينيوس سو نيوميريكال از كوانتيتيف مي بي ديسكريت اند كونتينيوس وات از ذا ديفرنس بين ديسكريت اند كونتينيوس اولذو بوث اوف ذيم از نيوميريكال اولذو بوث اوف ذيم ار نيوميريكال بس ذير از ا ديفرنس وات از ذا ديفرنس ان كونتينيوس لايك ايج بود ويت سيرم كرياتينين سيرم يوريك اسيد هيموجلوبين in all these variables, I can say age is 20.5 years. So it accepts a decimal point. So it is, con it is continuous. But if I ask you, what are the number of patients in the, in the department? And you say 20 patients. You cannot say 20 and a half patients. So if the variable is expressed in number, but the number should be unit, it is discrete. So if you have a MCQ question about the, this type of variable is, for example, number of beds in hospital, and then I, I put a categorical, ordinal, uh, numerical, quantitative, a continuous, discrete, the best description is discrete because it denotes that this variable should be expressed in unity. So uh, in Arabic, about quantitative or numerical, ده ممكن يبقى كونتينيوس يبقى زي الايج والويت والكلام ده انا ممكن اقول واحد وزنه 50 كيلو ونص يبقى يقبل علامه العشريه يبقى كونتينيوس ديسكريت ما يقبلش العامه العشريه زي ما اقول 
عدد المرضى في 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 العنبر ولا عدد الاسره في المستشفى ما اقدرش اقول عندي 200 سرير وربع ما تجيش لازم اقول بالرقم بالوحده يبقى اذا كان الفاريبل رقمي ويعبر عنه بوحده متكامله ولا ومش بكسور يبقى ديسكريت لو لازم لو ممكن كسور يبقى ده كونتينيوس Another description of variable independent and dependent just to be very simple dependent is consequence or outcome like for example hepatocellular carcinoma and hepatocellular carcinoma is due to hepatitis C so hepatitis C is independent so the independent variable is the cause or risk factors and dependent variable is the variable is the result consequence or outcome يعني بالعربي انا عندي اندبندنت وديبندنت انا هعرفها يبقى اعرفها ازاي لو انا لقيت السبب لو ده سبب الفاريبل ده يعبر عن سبب زي هيباتيتس سي زي سموكينج ولان كانسر يبقى السموكينج سموكينج از اندبندنت اند لان كانسر از ديبندنت فاريبل ذاتس اوكي واي وي ليرن اندبندنت اند ديبندنت فاريبلز بيكوز ان ذا ان ذا كامينج ييرز اند افتر جراديويشن you will know the statistical tests and the, uh, for knowing how to use the statistics you should know independent and dependent يعني لما بعرف independent and dependent بعرف اتعلم احسن just for application age as you see 32.9 so it is quantitative continuous variable sex it is categorical because it's male and female so you can apply this to the this table another point for revision mean median and mood to measure central tendency. So mean, it just to do sum for the values to be divided by their number. So this uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, they are eight values. So I do sum for them. So uh, by, like this and to be divided by their number eight. So the mean is 100. So this is mean. If I talk about mean, the mean, the mean, بجمع الارقام واقسمها على عددها يديني المتوسط الحسابي اللي هو المين. مود مود از ذا موست ريبيتيتيف فاليو سو اف يو جاست لوك هير يو فايند 100 100 100 100 ذي ار ريبيتيد فور تايمز سو ذيس 100 فاليو از ذا موست ريبيتيد فاليو سو مود ريفلكس ذا موست ريبيتيد فاليو سو ات از 100 المود بيعكس ايه الرقم اللي اتكرر كتير في الفاليوز لما نشوف هنا نشوف ال 100 يبقى ال 100 هي المود. Median. If I I'll ask if if I'll be asked about the medium median calculation, first of all we we should do two steps first. <coughs> Sorry for that. Two steps first. Number one, to know if the values are odd values like this: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine is odd values. And the second step is to arrange them. So after arranging them chronologically in ascending format like this, so this, these are the same values arranged chronologically. And they are nine values. To calculate median, median equal. So to know to which value ex, uh, represent the median, they are nine values. Nine plus one, so the number of values, plus one divided by two, equal the order of the median. So here there are nine values after their arrangement, uh, then nine plus one equal 10, 10 divided by two equal five. So one, two, three, four, five. So 90 is the fifth value and it is the median value for these values. Is it, is it clear? I think it is, it is clear. If, if they are even values, arrange them chronologically like this, and they are 10 values, uh, and then uh, 10 divided by two equal fifths. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So this is the fifth one, but they are even. So fifths plus sixth divided by two. So fifths, 100, plus six, which is 150. So the sum of them is 250 divided by two equal 125. So the median here is the average of the fifth and the sixth value. So arrange them chronologically, divide their number by two, and take this value and the succeeding value 
to be divided by two. يعني ما يكون عندي الميديان عدد زوجي رقم زوجي برتب زي ما قلنا في الأض وبعد ما رتب أشوف عددهم كام هنا عشرة يبقى عشرة على اثنين هاخد الخامس واخد اللي وراه واجمعهم على بعض واسمهم على اثنين يديني المتوسط الحساب الميديان اسف اللي هو هنا يبقى 1 125 مش هتلاقيه في الارقام دي بس هو متوسط لاثنين الخامس والسادس لو لو عندي 20 رقم ب 20 على 2 في ال 10 اخد ال 10 وال 11 واجمعهم على بعض واسمهم على اثنين از ات اوكي؟ اي ثينك اتس كلير دي هاو تو بريزنت ذا داتا ذا داتا ماي بي بريزنتد ان ا تيبل فاشن If you look at this table, you'll find also uh, just the method of delivery for 600 babies born in a hospital. So number of births and the percentage and the type method of delivery normal forceps cesarean section. So it is at the end of the day, we have number and the percentage for different variables for the delivery. So it is frequency table. So frequency distribution table is the table includes data just number and the percentage. يعني أنا in عربي in عربي الوقت ممكن أعبر عن الداتا بجدول اسمه frequency table. frequency يعني أنا ب أهو أنا عاوز أعرف الولادات 600 baby تولدهم في المستشفى عاوز أعرف من اللي تولد normal ومن اللي يحتاج forceps ومن اللي تولد قيصري أهو number كل واحد divided على total هيدين the percentage يبقى number and percentage that's all. يبقى لو هي نمبر وبرسنتج بس يبقى ده فريكوانسي ديستريبيوشن تيبل سو اي كان بريزنت ذا داتا ان فريكوانسي ديستريبيوشن تيبل اف ذا داتا از اكسبريسد ان فيجر لايك ذس اند اي لايك اولويز اي لايك فيجرز بيكوز وان فيجر از بيتر ذان 1000 وورد سو اف يو لوك هير ذس از نورمال ديليفري فور فور ذا سيم داتا نورمال ديليفري فور سبس ديليفري اند سيزيرن سيكشن اف يو لوك هير The majority of babies are born normally, so you can know. So this is squares divided by space. So this is bar graph. So if I ask you, what is this? You will say bar graph. What's meant by bar graph? It reflects frequency, and you will find squares separated by space, and you find the category for each square and the number in this place. The thing is, that you have a picture, and the picture is better than a thousand words. ويعني هنا مثلا ما تبص هنا تقول معظم العيال اتولدوا بالنورمال ديليفري ده عباره عن ايه مستطيل مفصول عن مفصولون عن بعضهم يبقى اسمه بار يبقى البار جراف عباره عن مستطيلات مفصوله عن بعضها اند ذيس از بي تشارت اتس سيركل سو ا بي تشارت از ا سيركل اند يو كان اند يو كان فايند ذا بارس اوف ذا بي ريفلكس ذا فريكوانسي اوف ديفرنت موداليتيز So this is another method to express and represent the data in a B-chart or circular manner. I think it's clear, I'm not going to read it. Histogram, it is similar to bar, but the major difference of histogram and bar, you can find here, homoglobin, and this is multiple values, and they are squares attached uh, together. So there is no separation. If the data are represented by the, this fashion, this is known as histogram. This is a frequency uh, polygon. I think it's better to go to your notes to read the details of, a, of all of them. Regarding the magnitude of difference, as we discussed together, magnitude and difference in a study design I discussed with you relative risk, absolute risk reduction, number need to treat, and odds ratio. Uh, first speaking, All the ratio is best fitting with this case control study. Let us go to this first example. Calculate relative risk of lung cancer associated with smoking. So we have smoking group 10,000, non-smoking group 10,000, and this is the lung cancer. 100 out of 10,000 is smoking, 10 out of 10,000 in non-smoking. So lung cancer, the relative risk is to divide the incidence of lung cancer in one group by the incidence in the second group. So it is 100 per 10,000 divided by 10 per 10,000 equal uh, 10. So at the end of the day, I can say smoking is associated with 10 folds higher risk of lung cancer in comparison to non-smoking. يعني بالعربي أنا عندي مجموعة هي من العينين ومجموعة تانية هي بشوف المشكلة حصلت فين 
بقسم النسبة هنا 100 في ال 10,000 على 10 في ال 10,000 يديني ريليتيف ريسك يبقى ريليتيف ريسك هو مقسوم النسب كل ما زاد الرقم عن واحد معناه ده سيجنيفيكانت اعلى قل عن الواحد معناه سيجنيفيكانت اقل سو اف ريليتيف ريسك اكسيدز 1 ذس مينز ات از انكريزد اف اتز سيجنيفيكانت ليس ذان 1 ذس مينز ات از ريديوسد اند ذس از ذا فاليو تو تو جاست تو ميجر ا ديفرنس سو اف ات از 1 اور نير 1 ذير از نو ديفرنس بين ذا جروبس Calculate relative mortality and the absolute risk reduction. If we apply relative risk, the same, 100 out of 100,000, 10 divided by 100,000, so relative risk is 10. The most important is to know absolute risk reduction. Why? Because sometimes the relative risk magnifies the problem. So in this example, if we measure absolute risk reduction, absolute risk reduction is only to subtract. The incidence from here, from that, so 100 out of 100,000 minus 10 out of 100,000 equal this. So 0.100 minus 0.0010 equal 0.090. So this is absolute risk reduction. It is just 9 out of 10,000. So it is 90 out of 100,000. So it is. Uh, uh, less impressive than tenfold here. So it's better to know absolute risk reduction. يعني بالعربي المثال اللي أنا جبته عشان أفرق ما بين الأبسوليوت والريلاتيف ريسك. الريلاتيف ريسك هنا 10. 10 فولد بس لما نيجي للرقم أنا عاوز أعرف الأبسوليوت ريسك ريدكشن. أبسوليوت ريسك ريدكشن بسهولة خالص بطرح الإنسدنس. بس أنا لما بطرح الإنسدنس بكيب الريشيو يعني ده 100 من 100,000 ناقص 10 من 100,000 يبقى هنا في الآخر بتبقى 90 من 100,000 ما بشيلش الإصفار. يبقى 90 من 100,000 يعني رقم مش كبير قوي لا غير ما اقول 10 فولز 10 فولز بيدي انطباع معظم. Uh, so in this example I would like you to calculate number need to treat. To calculate number need to treat you should first know absolute risk reduction. So absolute risk reduction as I mentioned before is to subtract. So here 0.1 uh, 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 zero zero minus here ten uh, percent so one uh, percent so ten percent minus one percent equal nine percent or zero point zero nine zero and then to divide one by this absolute risk reduction so number need to treat is uh, an equation one divided by absolute risk reduction equal eleven so for each eleven patients treated. One patient will be uh, will have the benefit. The lower the number need to treat, the better the performance of the drug under assessment. So this is how we calculate number need to treat in Arabic. ما بتطلب منك تحسب ال number need to treat في الأول لازم تحسب the absolute risk reduction. وإن أنت تطرح the incidence من هنا من هنا عشرة في الألف وهنا مية من الألف يا مية من الألف ناقص عشرة في الألف يساوي تسعين في الألف إلى تسعة من مية. اقسم واحد على 9 من 100 يساوي 11 11 ده هو النمبر نيتو تريت كل ما الرقم قل يعني لو اثنين يبقى اعظم بكتير يبقى الدواء عظيم جدا لو لو اقل من 100 في الراندوماز كنترول ستادي بيعتبر حاجه كويسه سو ان راندوماز كنترول ستادي دي كونسيدر نمبر نيتو تريت ليس ذان 100 ذان ادفانتج اف از ابوف ذس ذن وي لوك ات ذا كوست اوف ذا دراج سو تو نو ذا ذا امبورتنس اوف ذا دراج وي نو وي نيد تو نو نمبر نيتو تريت اند ذا كوست اوف ذا دراج the lower the number need to treat and the lower the cost, the better the uh, efficacy and the necessity of availability of this drug in hospital. In Arabic, كل ما number need to treat قل وسعره قل ده لازم يبقى موجود في المستشفى. In randomized control trial, we like it to be less than 100. If it's above 100, this will be uh, negative in randomized controlled study. Odds ratio. Other issue is how to assess the magnitude of difference in case control study. There is a difference between other issue and relative risk, although it carries the same meaning. So if I say other issue four, this means that the item under assessment occurs four times in this group. So here we have 100 patients, antibiotic users, and 100 patients, no antibiotic users. And they have uh, so the, uh, the, the, here 40 patients have diarrhea, and here 10 patients have diarrhea. If this is a case control study and I would like to assess all the ratio, 
I should first assess odds for the patient for antibiotic users divided by odds of no antibiotic users. How to calculate odds for antibiotic user is to divide the number of patients who have diarrhea by those who have no diarrhea. And for this, the same number of patients who have diarrhea uh, divided by those who have no diarrhea. And at the end, I divide this odds by that to calculate odds ratio. So the first step odds for antibiotic users 40 divided by 60 equal 0.66 patients who have diarrhea and patients who have no diarrhea. If, red, if, if I'm thinking of relative risk, and relative, I say 40%. Here, there is no percent. 40 divided by 60, uh, diarrhea, no diarrhea. Second step, for non, no antibiotic users, it is 10 divided by 90, 0.11. Then the odds ratio is the odds of this group divided by this group at the end is sex. This means that the use of antibiotic is associated with, with sex faults increased diarrhea. In Arabic, odds ratio, the test we use in the case control study. If I have ده مجموعتين اهوت ده مجموع حصل لها ده مجموعه الانتيبيوتيك ونو انتيبيوتيك وبشوف الاس... والاسهال حصل لنا في 40 عيان وهنا حصل في 10 مرض في رياضه فريسك كنت بقول 40% هنا ما, ب... ما بقولش كده هحسب الاودز دول وبعدين الاودز دول واقسمهم على بعض فالاودز الانتيبيوتيك الناس اللي عندها اسهال على الناس اللي ما عندهاش يبقى 40 على 60 يساوي ثلثين او 66 من 100 والاودز بتاع النون انتيبيوتيك يوزرز 10 على 90 11 من 100 اقسم ده على ده يساوي ستة يبقى نفس المعنى بتاع ريلتيف ريسك ان الدايريا اوكيرز سكس فولز هاير ان انتيبيوتيك يوزر ان كومبارزون تو ذا اذر اجين كيس كنترول ستادي هحسب لها اودز ريشيو الكوهورت ستادي ورندوماز كنترول ستادي بحسب لها ريلتيف ريسك سو ريلتيف ريسك از بيست فيتنج وذ كوهورت ستادي اند رندوماز كنترول ستادي اند هير ان كيس كنترول اودز ريشيو از تو بي يوزد ديسبيرشن اوف ذا داتا Uh, so uh, if, if these are two curves of the data, here the mean is 70 and here the mean is 70, but look here, the curve is like this, so the data is dispersed so much than this one. So here the dispersion is, le le is less than the red one. And uh, the, uh, this is just to, to show you the median and range, this may express the spread of the data, so this is the median, uh, as uh, shown by this box and uh, whisker plot. I'm not going to uh, bother you by this, but I'd like to concentrate on standard deviation because I like you to just understand the meaning, how to calculate the standard deviation, how to use it, and what is its meaning. So the, uh, I leave this until we calculate the standard deviation. So if we have these values, 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40, and I want to know the mean and the standard deviation for this quantitative data. So first step is to calculate mean. Mean means to sum all these values and then to be divided by their number. So their, their mean is 30. Then x minus uh, x to this, uh, this, uh, so, how to calculate this equation. So I say the, this, this is x and this is 20 minus 30 equal x minus x to this slash. So 20 minus 30 equal minus 10. So uh, 25 minus 30 minus five. 30 minus 30 equal zero. 35 minus 30 equal five. 40 minus 30 equal 10. After that, I, if you submit all this, you'll find zero. Minus 15 plus 15 equals zero. But the next step is to do to the power of, to, to multiply each value to the power of two. So 10 divided by 10 equals 100. And I omit minus 5, 25, 0, 0, 5, 25, 10, 100, because I multiplied it by itself to have the, uh, the power of two. So the sum of these x minus x uh, slash to the power of two equals 250. And then to calculate the variance, the variance is the total sum of these values divided by the number of values minus one. So their number one, two, three, four, five, minus one equal four. 
So 250 multiplied, divided by four equal 62.5. The standard deviation is the root, square root of the variance. So it, if you apply here, the square root of 62.5 is uh, 7.9. And during the, uh, the uh, real lecture, this student was very smart because he answered all this step and even uh, he trained uh, the, the students for how to calculate standard deviation. So this is how we calculate the standard deviation. So uh, what is the value of standard deviation is to know the dispersion of the data. So if, if we know the standard deviation in the mean, we can say 68% of the data lies within one standard deviation. 95% of the data are within two standard deviation. Standard deviation means above or below the mean. And 99.7, uh, almost all data are within three standard deviation. And in very easy format, if you find a standard deviation very small, this means the data are following normal distribution. So in, in Arabic, احنا بنحسب ال standard deviation ليه؟ عشان نشوف احنا بنتعامل مع normal distribution ولا لا. لما يكون ال standard deviation صغير في الغالب هنبقى uh, في normal distribution. Normal distribution بيبقى bell shaped curve like this. So uh, 68% من الداتا هتبقى within one standard deviation وكلمة standard deviation معناها يا فوق يا تحت. Plus minus. Uh, 95% هيبقوا اثنين ستاندرد ديفيشن 99.7 وزن ثلاثه ستاندرد ديفيشن يعني فور اكزامبل هنا سي ذا مين ايج اوف ستودنتس اتيني ذس كلاس از 20 ييرز اند ستاندرد ديفيشن از كوارتر اير سو 99.7% ويل بي وذن 3 ستاندرد ديفيشن اوف اوبر 9 فروم 20 سو اف يو سي 3 ستاندرد ديفيشن And the, it, the standard division is 0.5. Suppose that the age is 20 and the standard division is one year. Suppose that we are dealing with, uh, with person, not students. 20, the mean is 20, and the standard division is one. This means that 68% of this population are between what? 19 and 21 because this is one standard deviation, above or below. And 95% are within two standard deviations, 18 to 22, and 9.7% within three standard deviations. So it is 17 to 23. I mean, in Arabic, when I say that I have a group of people who have 20 years old, and the standard deviation is a year. That means 68% 20 زائد او ناقص سنه يعني من 19 ل 21 و 95 ما بين سنتين فوق وتحت يبقى 18 ل 22 و 99 و 10 ما بين 17 ل 23 يبقى اذا كانت الداتا هتمشي بهذا الشكل يبقى ده نورمال ديستريبيوشن كيرف اور بيل شيب كيرف سو نورمال ديستريبيوشن كيرف از بيل شيب كيرف ذا لاست بوينت ام جوين تو اكسبلين تو يو Uh, the symmetrical and asymmetrical distribution of the data. If mean equal median, you'll find here right tail and left tail are equal. So this direction, this side, this side and this side are equal. So for symmetrical distribution, the mean is approximate equal the median. The tails, the right direction, the left direction are the same. The distribution of the bars to the left and right away from the mean, The tail is a part where the counts in the histogram becomes smaller. For a symmetric distribution, the left and right tails are, are equally balanced, meaning that they, are, they have about the same length. يعني أنا لما يكون عندي داتا عاوز أعرف سيمتريك ولا لأ. لو المين في النص وساوي الميديان يبقى أنا وهنا الاتجاه ده للشوية اللي هنا زي الشوية اللي هنا، الشوية اللي في اليمين زي الشوية اللي في الشمال، يبقى الرايت ده بنسميه الديل اليمين والديل الشمال زي بعض. You have a symmetrical data. So a symmetric distribution is one where the left and right hand sides of the distribution are roughly equally balanced around the mean. Uh, the same here. So this is the median in the half and both sides are equal. If this data is skewed to right, 
although uh, also known as positive skewed. Uh, this is the second item, skewed. Skewed means the data, the mean is not in the middle and it's not equal median. So if, uh, as you see here, the picture is not symmetrical around the mean anymore. For a right skewed distribution, the mean is typically greater than median. Also notice that the tail of the distribution on the right hand positive is longer than on the left hand side. In Arabic, ممكن أقول عندي positive أو skewed to the right. If skewed to the right, the right tail أكبر من the left tail. يبقى عندي long right tail و short left tail يبقى ده اسمه positive skewed أو skewed to the right. وهنا المين أكتر من الميديان. لازم نركز في كل الأيتم دي. يبقى when the mean is uh, uh, larger than the median and the right tail is longer than the left tail, so the data are skewed to the right or positive skewed. The opposite is the left one. So the mean is typically less than the median in the left skewedness. Uh, distribution that skewed to the left has exactly the opposite characteristics. The mean is typically less than the median. The tail of the distribution is longer on the left hand side. The median is closer to the third quartile than the first quartile. Again, this is the symmetric median in the, in the middle. Here, the right is larger, right tail is larger. The median here, so the right tail is positive. So the positive is skewed or skewed to the right. The opposite is the left is skewed. Uh, again and again, you should fix this slide and, uh, and uh, get uh, the attention. The last point I'm going to highlight is the application of a statistical test or p-value. P-value means, if you find here p-value, this means probability. And it is the reflection of a statistical difference. And we have a statistical difference and a clinical difference. Sometimes we have a statistical difference that is not clinically uh, important and vice versa. I'm not going to bother you by this point, but concentrate on the p-value. A p-value less than 0.05, 5%, this means there is a significant difference. If you look here, recipient age, and these are different groups, p-value is less than, even, in a, even here, is less than 0.001. So it's highly significant. It exceeds, it is less than 5%. It is highly significant because it's, even is less than 1 per thousand. What's meant by 5%? This means if I repeat this experiment and this data for another patient, another group, if it's repeated, suppose that B value is 4%, if the data are repeated, if the test is repeated on, uh, and the, and the study is repeated in different areas of the world for 100 time, it will be the same results like this in, in if the B value is 4%, so 96 times it gives the same results, and only four times it, it will be opposite. So when B value is significant, this means that we reject null hypothesis, and there is, there is a statistical significant difference. What's meant by null hypothesis? If we have a test between two groups, so we assume that there is no difference between the two groups. So it is null hypothesis. If we apply a statistical test and we find a statistical difference, B value less than 5%, 0.05, this means that null hypothesis is rejected because there is statistical significant difference. In Arabic. <coughs> مش هقعد ابص للارقام انا عاوز تيست التيست الاحصائي بيديني حاجه اسمها بي فاليو البي فاليو معناها بروبابيلتي بنقول ان ان انا عندي بفترض ان مفيش فرق لغايه ما يثبت العكس يثبت العكس بالبي فاليو لما يطلع اقل من 5% او 5 من 100 معناها ان ده سيجنيفيكانت ومعناها ان النال هايبوثيسس اللي هو مفيش فرق من المجموعات مرفوضه مرفوض ان النال هايبوثيسس معناها ديفرنس سيجنيفيكانت ديفرنس ساعات بيبقى فيه statistical significant difference مالوش clinical importance وساعات العكس. مالناش دعوه بالنقطه دي، خلينا نركز في البي فاليو. لما بقول بي فاليو 4 من 100 معناها لو عدنا التجربه ديت اتعادت في اي مكان، اتعادت 100 مره، 96 مره هتبقى نفس النتيجه في فرق من المجموعات. 
واربع مرات ممكن يبقى ما فيش فرق يبقى الناس قبلوا الفرق الاحصائي ما يبقى البي فاليو اقل من 5 من 100 ده عشان اقول سيجنيفيكانت استاتستيكال ديفرنس هنيجي للنقطه اللي بعد كده سوري فور ذس هنيجي بعد كده للايه للتي تيست انا مش هديكم فكره عن الاحصاء لان الاحصاء فيها كلام كتير جدا والداتا باراميتريك ولا مش باراميتريك سو ام نوت جوينت تو بادر يو باي ذا ديتيلز اوف بايو ستاتستكس بات جاست اف وي اسيوم ذات وي ار ديلينج ويز normally distributed data and we apply the t-test so t-test how to use it t-test is used for numerical value values uh, and we have two types unpaired and paired t-test how how to use or when to use unpaired t-test and the paired t-test if we have two groups of patients and i want to test A statistical difference between these two groups regarding quantitative variable like age, weight, dialysis duration, uh, serum creatinine, serum uric acid, and this these are quantitative data, and they are two groups, and the variable is quantitative, so the test of use is unpaired t-test. So unpaired t-test is used if I'm going to compare two groups regarding quantitative variable. If I'm going to test one group of patients regarding quantitative variable, but I would like to know the difference between this value of this variable before and after. So before and after treatment, suppose that I give drugs and then I test hemoglobin before and after this drug for the same group of patients. So the test of use, because hemoglobin is quantitative and this is one group of patients before and after, I'm going to test the difference between before and after values. The test of choice is paired t-test. Usually, uh, I'm not going to discuss with you the two-tailed, but we like to look at the two-tailed. And I'm leaving this point until the graduation. So in Arabic, لما أكون عاوز أفرق بين مجموعتين عشان بدرس ما فرق ما بينهم ل ل variable quantitative زي الكرياتينين والإيج والوزن والهايت والكلام ده. ده كوانتيتيف فاريو وعندي مجموعتين من العيانين وعاوز اشوف فرق بينهم في الطول ولا لا يبقى هابلاي امبيرد تيست لكن لو هو جروب واحده من العيانين وعاوز اشوف الفرق بين الهيموجلوبين قبل وبعد السكر قبل وبعد التريتمنت يبقى ده كوانتيتيف فاريبل قبل وبعد وهي جروب واحده من العيانين يبقى بستخدم البيرد تيست اما بيبقى عندي ورقه الاحصاء بشوف التوتال تيست وانا مش هفسر بقى اكتر من كده نيجي لتست تاني This the coming the next test is correlation. It is just correlation for you. I'm not going to give you more details. When I sh should I use correlation testing? If I have a group of patients, I and I want to I would like to build the relationship between two quantitative variables among this one group of patients, like body mass index and creatinine. So they are two variables. In one group of patients, and the type of variables uh, are quantitative. The test of use is correlation, and here I measure R, and R either positive or negative. Positive means direct uh, relationship, negative means inverse relationship. And the larger, the bigger the R, the better the the difference uh, or the better the correlation. Again, in Arabic, test correlation. Da bastaqdimu imta. لما اكون عاوز اوجد علاقه ما بين تو فاريبلز مش تو جروبس تو فاريبلز التو فاريبلز كوانتيتيف في مجموعه من العين زي مثلا عاوز اجيب علاقه ما بين البودي ويت واليوريك اسيد في مجموعه من العينين البودي ويت واليوريك اسيد الاثنين كوانتيتيف يبقى هعمل تيست اسمه كوريليشن الكوريليشن ده هيطلع لي حاجه اسمها ار الار ده ممكن تبقى بالبوزيتيف او بالنيجاتيف بوستف معناها نتيجة طردية ونيجاتيف معناها نتيجة عكسية. نتيجة عكسية معناها ده زاد أقل وهكذا. نتيجة طردية معناها الاثنين في نفس الاتجاه. لما أكون كده كل ما زاد الآر يعني قربت من ال 100% يبقى معناها إن الكورليشن شديد. نكتفي بهذا القدر في النقطة دي هناخد مثال. If we apply a research this is an exercise. A researcher wishes to examine the relationship between serum creatine milligram per deciliter, quantitative, and the body mass index 
kilogram per square meter quantitative in a group of systemic lupus patients. And R is minus 0.2. Uh, so it is, this is the, the correlation. Why correlation? Because here we use R and not only that, because I'm building a relationship between two quantitative variables in one group of patients. So the best fitting is correlation. The second example, a researcher wishes to examine the difference between two groups of patients regarding the occurrence of diabetes. Here, it is not quantitative. Diabetes is not quantitative, it's qualitative. So qualitative variable between two groups, to assess the difference, we use this test, chi-square. So chi-square is used when I'm going to build a relationship between two groups, correlation between, uh, to compare two groups regarding qualitative or categorical value, like male-female diabetes, rejection mortality, I use chi-square. A researcher wishes to examine the relationship between serum creatinine uh, among two groups of patients. Each group includes 200 patients, two groups, quantitative variable, so the test of use is unpaired test. If we are comparing three groups, so more than two groups regarding quantitative va variable, we use one-way ANOVA. So again, and again, uh, if we are testing, if we are uh, building a, a comparison between two groups regarding quantitative variable, we use unpaired test. If the, the same variable before and after, and it's quantitative paired test, if they are more than two groups, and the variable under assessment is quantitative, one way ANOVA. Uh, we use to tell test, correlation is used when I build the relationship between two variables, quantitative variables, within one group of patients. And the, uh, we use R. For qualitative categorical values, we use chi-square. So this is a simple revision. At the end, I like for all students the best uh, out, the best uh, results, best success, best future. And I love all students. And this is a sample of students, 32 students. I love them very much because they uh, were best achiever and hoping them all the best success. They shared us in research. يعني 32 طالب معملوا أبحاث وروحوا قدموها في أوروبا وأمريكا واخدوا جوائز وبعضهم نواب في أمريكا وأوروبا ده شيء عظيم جدا يحسب لكل الطب المنصورة. طبعا في جزء منهم من برنامج مانشستر وجزء منهم من الطب البرنامج العادي فالطالب المصري بخير وعظيم جدا وحتى الطلبه الماليزيين ممتازين وكل الطلاب اللي بيدرسوا عندنا الواحد بيحبهم وبيحترمهم لانه بيبذلوا مجهود عظيم جدا. At the end uh, I hope the best success ان شاء الله and this is considered ABC so this is just a drop and I know by uh, your study and by the advancement in your career you will uh, gain a lot of information. Uh, thank you very much. Hoping you all the best and goodbye.